Hi, everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here for a virtual road show. And this panel or is it's not even a panel. It's this this lovely person is going to talk about international ports of call, the port of Australia. So uh, her name is Melanie Schinkel. She's the Aussie Specialist Program Team Leader for Tourism Australia. And basically what I want to ask you, Melanie, is, you know, for some of the travel advisors who are here and who may be maybe cruise centric for other parts of the world. Uh, tell us what are the advantages for uh, porting in Australia other than that you get to see Australia? Sure, well, thanks Alan for the introduction and it's awesome to be here with all the advisors to give them a quick rundown on cruising in Australia. Well, you know, it's a vast and ancient land. So it's a country of extraordinary natural wonders captivating wildlife and a sparkling marine environment. It's a land where white sands fringed by impossibly blue waters, rugged rock formations rising from sprawling red deserts and lush rainforest rich in biodiversity. So Australia is a country where nature really puts on a show. It's where modern cities are a feast for the senses and alive with diverse cultures. It's a land where indigenous heritage and tradition date back more than 60,000 years. And it's a place with an outback spirit as big as the continent itself. So with so much to choose from and so many places to explore, a cruise is an excellent opportunity to experience the best of Australia with ease. It could mean sailing out of Sydney Harbour at sunset past the Opera House bathed in golden light. Classic. It could take you. Yes, it's and it's an amazing experience. I mean, it could take you to idyllic tropical beaches within reach of the Great Barrier Reef. Or it could allow you to slip quietly into the remote gorges in the rugged wilderness of the Kimberley. So whatever Australian experience you want, you can have it on board or alongside an Australian cruise. So the most popular ports, the one we think of off the top of our head, uh, Sydney, Brisbane, let's go over them and, and talk about each of them, please, and compare them for the for the uninitiated. Absolutely. So, you know, there are around 50 ports and anchorages to choose from in Australia. Wow. So, yeah, I'll, I know it's a lot. It's a lot. So I will just cover the most popular ports, which, as you said, are the cities of Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. So Sydney, as you know, is the capital of New South Wales. It's Australia's and indeed one of the world's leading cruise destinations. So arriving by cruise ship in Australia's first city is always super special with the scenery evolving from the ancient sandstone cliffs of Sydney Heads and pristine National Park bushland just inside the harbour to the iconic Opera House, Harbour Bridge and the ever-changing city skyline that reveal themselves as you round uh, Bradley's Head. It's a phenomenal experience just to go through Sydney Heads. I used to do it many, many times myself when I was in the Australian Navy and it was my favourite part of coming home. So Whoa, whoa, whoa. Talk about the Navy. <laughs> How yeah. long were you in the Navy? Oh, a good few years, a good few years. But yeah, our, one of our major naval bases is based in Sydney. So I would have the opportunity to go through Sydney Heads all the time. It was amazing. But, but how great that you can do that. And now still, uh, it, it's like you, your love of, of the country and the water, you get to do that. How great. I'm sorry. I, I am. I no, I wanna, I'm a, I, obviously a deep-seated uh, patriot for Australia. <laughs> so this is a perfect job for me. But um, yeah, so Sydney has the cr amazing cruise facilities. And so we have the White Bay Cruise Terminal, which has won multiple state, national and overseas awards for innovative design. And now the iconic overseas passenger terminal at Circular Quay has been upgraded as well. So following its multi-million dollar investment, the overseas passenger terminal ensures a comfortable one day turnaround for the largest of ships and provides the unique operational capability to service two cruise ships at birth at the same time. So and that's whether it, yeah, that's in Sydney. So whether it be the overseas passenger terminal, which is right on the city's doorstep or White Bay, just west of the Harbour Bridge, both facilities offer easy access to downtown hotels shopping, restaurants and tourist attractions, as well as Sydney's domestic and international airports that are just a short journey away by car, taxi, shuttle bus or train. So, yeah, there are just a few reasons why Sydney continues to break records every year for cruise ship visits. From, no, it's, um, it's, almost like, it's almost like a river cruise. You just get off the ship and you're there. 
It is. It's amazing. So we had around 119 just a few years ago uh, to more than 352 in the last cruise season. So that brought almost 1.6 million people through Sydney's terminals before the season's end. So pretty impressive. Okay. Okay. Next. Yeah. So let's talk about Melbourne. So Melbourne is Victoria's capital city and it's a city of energy, sophistication and innovation from the iconic and creative laneways to the majestic theatres and contemporary galleries to the unique architecture and lush gardens. The city's many attractions and treasures are all easily accessible via the city's port. The Heritage Cruise Terminal at Station Pier is one of the best in Australia with three dedicated cruise berths. Not just the arts and cultural capital of Australia, Melbourne is the country's leading destination for shopping. So designer labels, flagship stores and quirky independent boutiques provide plenty of diversion for the super serious shopper. It is also a culinary hotspot. So Melbourne's rich and eclectic dining scene offers a startling array of the world's great cuisines from popular favorites to the truly groundbreaking. So we have some major world-class events that take centre stage in Melbourne throughout the year, from the Australian Open in January to the Melbourne Cup Carnival in November. So from its inspired, exciting city centre to its lively neighbourhood hubs, Melbourne is a gateway to Victoria's outstanding wineries, native natural springs, peninsulas, spectacular coastline and alpine villages. And also within two hours of Melbourne, Visitors can also see Australian wildlife in their natural habitat, enjoy fine wines and gourmet food in beautiful settings and visit galleries and museums with rich Australian collections. I feel bad for Sydney. I know there's good food there too. Yeah, absolutely. It is. But I mean, yeah, if you're really crazy about food, then Melbourne is the place for you. So is that, is there anything more on Melbourne or can we go on to Brisbane? Yeah, let's talk about Brisbane. And, you know, I'm a little biased because, um, Brisbane's my home and it's in the state of Queensland. Now, Queensland really is like no other place on earth from its endless coastlines, great outback landscapes, of course, the world famous Great Barrier Reef and the array of luscious rainforest. It's basically just a giant living, breathing postcard waiting to be explored. (laughs) So it really is. So through its sheer size, ideal location, superb weather, and unique natural landscapes, Queensland offers a stunning range of cruising opportunities and 13 destinations. So there's a lot to see in Queensland when it comes to cruising. So we'll talk about the most popular port, which is Brisbane, and that's Queensland's capital city and Australia's third largest city. It offers a perfect mix of cosmopolitan and tropical lifestyle to its culturally diverse population of around 2 million people, And it's well serviced by city infrastructure, including theatres, museums, live music venues, land and river transport, and a broad range of international cuisine. So the river setting is really booming right now with new hotels, attractions, and experiences providing the perfect destination to cruise to and the ideal place to cruise from. So Brisbane's cruise profile is really undergoing a real renaissance with new infrastructure and improved passenger terminals complementing the broad range of cruise-specific experiences that have been developed. And I feel that that's really in preparation for the 2032 Olympics, which will be happening in Brisbane as well. Wow. So that's exciting. I I can imagine going to the Olympics by cruise. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Let Let me ask you, though. Uh, which cruise lines are uh, going to Australian ports right now? Yeah, so whether it's sailing into the big cities or exploring the remote areas, um, cruises in Australia are really varied. And all of the world's leading cruise lines include Australia in their programs, with options ranging from small ship operators through to mid-range ships, large contemporary ships and high-end lines. Some cruise lines with Australian itineraries include Carnival, p Princess, Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Cunard, Viking, Azamara, Holland America and Norwegian. Uh, newcomers for the 23-24 season are Disney, Virgin Voyages and Windstar. So do check those out. 
Now, I'm afraid I don't know all the cruise lines that have a home port in Australia at the moment, but I know Carnival is operating out of Sydney and Brisbane. And Virgin Voyages Resilient Lady is now calling Melbourne home this year. So definitely pr- plenty of options to get your clients down to Australia. Uh, let me also say that uh, in the virtual road show, we have another panel with John Dorio from Virgin Voyages talking exactly about that. So please, w- when you're done watching us, go watch that one. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yes. I've run into Virgin at a couple of trade shows now and they're like, pull me aside and go, oh my God, we're so excited about our Australia itineraries. So it's a, it's a great win for us to have them um, be based out of uh, Melbourne. Well, so cruises can sometimes be like a little, it's like a, a box, or, box of sampler chocolates. Like what, mm-hmm. what are we going to go back and, and, and so how are you planning to convert the cruise ship guests to want to come back and do a land vacation? Yeah, I mean, as such a vast continent, it's really easy to underestimate Australia's scale and diversity and the time a traveler might need to enjoy multiple regions and experiences. So Australia is almost exactly the same size as the USA. So it is impossible to see everything it has to offer just via cruising. So an extended stay before or after a cruise provides an ideal opportunity to maximise time in Australia and broaden the experience. So Tourism Australia is pretty confident that once cruise clients get a taste of what Australia has to offer during their time ashore, they'll be inspired to come back and explore the unique landscapes, Indigenous culture and wildlife that can really only be experienced on a land vacation. Okay, so then that's really the messaging for our audience right now. Um, not only should you be thinking about selling cruises to Australia, but you should be thinking of the pre and post cruise, uh, 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 whatever you could do, uh, yes. uh, because there's so much. And then, of course, sell them the return trip. That's really what they should be thinking about. Absolutely. Because, you know, you might not get the chance to see all the wildlife you want to see when you're ashore on the on the shorter excursions. You know, you might want to go out, as I said for a day trip out to Phillip Island and see the marching penguins or something like that. So there's plenty of things that you can't um, experience just via cruising. So if you can extend, that's the perfect opportunity to just add a few extra experiences and make that Australia itinerary more memorable for your clients. So um, it's such a big topic. Can you, do you feel like you've covered it all? Do you have anything else you want to tell our travel advisors before we part? Well, I mean, we could talk about some of the um, opportunities for experiences when they do come alongside. Okay. Um, so onshore, like the possibilities, as I said, are limitless in Australia to get the most out of it. Um, there are so many ways to explore on land. They can choose an organized shore tour offered by the cruise line, usually pre-bookable before travel or on board and coordinate with the ship's arrival and departure times. Or they can explore independently, choosing their own activities and excursions or simply venturing ashore to explore at their own pace. Cruises can arrange a private tour or a guide, which is really great for groups, families or visitors with special interests. And a private excursion can provide a bespoke or flexible option too. So this might be available through the Cruise Line's Bespoke Services Program or through a private operator. So there are a lot of experiences ashore in Australia, but I'll just highlight a couple in the key cities that you know, your clients might be interested in that are accessible from our most popular ports. So in Sydney, if clients want to see iconic Australian wildlife, I recommend visiting Taronga Zoo, which is located on the shores of Sydney Harbour. And Taronga Zoo is just a 12-minute ferry ride from Circular Quay, and it's a haven for koalas, kangaroos, kookaburras, Tasmanian devils, wombats, dingoes, and oh my, oh my, so much more. There's so many animals that you can interact with and see at that zoo. Um, now, in Melbourne, I briefly mentioned a day trip to Phillip Island. Now, this is famous for the Daily Penguin Parade, which allows visitors to catch a glimpse of the island's native little penguins as they come back ashore after a day of fishing. So you can head to the Summerland Beach for a 180-degree viewing of the parade, or just take a VIP guided tour so they can get you nice up and close to those penguins. And finally, my home city, just a 75 minute ride from Brisbane. I recommend Tangaluma Island Resort on Morton Island. So day trip packages include options to go sandboarding, 
ride ATV quad bikes, take a scenic helicopter flight, and even go whale watching or snorkeling at the shipwrecks. And, you know, if your clients uh, have time to stay overnight, they will also experience the nightly wild dolphin feeding. So that is just a few awesome experiences you can have when you come ashore, some of those popular ports. That's great. Now, where can travel advisors go to get more information about Australia and the cruise ports? Of course. So um, the Australian Cruise Association, they have a fantastic website at www.australiancruiseassociation.com. They also have an excellent 2023 brochure, which is available for download at the Tourism Australia booth. So do check that out. Um, you know, also Tourism Australia's multi-award winning Aussie specialist program. So we just released a brand new Cruise Australia training course which provides advisors with knowledge on how to sell cruise holidays in Australia with confidence, learn about experiences on offer, the different styles of cruises available, and the many contrasting cruise regions to choose from because there is just so much more than Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. As I said, we have 50 ports. Um, and recently, did you give that address to, or is that a different, is that the same address? So that is on www.aussiespecialist.com. And actually, we recently hosted a webinar with representatives from Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane who went into detail about the best shore experiences. And that recording is also available to watch on the Aussie Specialist website. So that would be a great one for them. So if they're an advisor and they're not an Aussie Specialist yet, do please register on aussiespecialist.com. You'll need to complete the 90-minute Introduction to Australia course to become an expert on Australia, and then you will be able to access our brand new cruise course. So that's um, some great resources for everyone. And, you know, everyone who's attended the show and completes the training by the end of August, do send me an email. Let me know because I will send you some Aussie treats in the mail. So just let me know so I can get that out to you. But um, And your email? Yes, so my email is mshinkel at tourism.australia.com. Uh, I'll make sure it's available in the booth as well. And yeah, make sure you check out our booth because we've yes, yeah. uh, put a bunch of cruise resources that we've made available um, to you there. And Carla and I will be online and keen to chat to everyone about cruising in Australia. So do come and say good day. So that's a lot of ways to get in contact a plus immediately after watching this, go to the booth. Yes, right. go to the booth. Lots of downloads, some cool videos about cruising. And yeah, you'll be able to get our details there as well. Melanie, thank you so much. And this is Alan Fine for Virtual Roadshows and Insider Travel Report.